Good morning. Uh, what a mishaps and quite an interesting morning for all parties involved, that's for sure. Uh, after a little bit of deliberation, myself and the other lecturer in the classroom at the what I thought was the assigned time, realized that one of us had made a mistake and we moved forward. So I do apologize for anyone that uh, was inconvenienced by that and you know we'll make it up throughout the semester for sure. Um, with that being said, I saw that one of you tried to access the syllabus and could not. You have to use your Montclair email to access the syllabus because it is shared with all Montclair um, email. So you, ha you have to belong to the organization in order to see it. So for the student that attempted to do that with uh, an, an outside organization email, you just simply won't be able to do that. So what I'm gonna go through now is our syllabus for uh, fitness activities. And we will talk a little bit about how this is gonna run down. Uh, it is unfortunate that today was the class that I missed because it was actually perfect that we started in the classroom as opposed to the, um, the lab, but we will make it work. There is another Friday immediately that I will not be able to attend. That's going to be uh, Friday the 10th. I'll be participating in a military function for the 20 year reunion or commemoration of Memorial, there we go, of 9-11. All right, so what we'll have here is everything's gonna be broken down into modules and it will be released as we go. Um, if we ever miss a class like today and there's assignment due uh, today, we obviously will not be required to do that assignment unless specifically told elsewise. So we'll go to the syllabus here. This is where you can access it. I believe there might be an opportunity in the files as well. Clicks uh, open a new window and then boom, there you have it. So office hours are gonna be Monday and Thursday. And that is the confusion right there. It's gonna be Tuesday and Friday. Class hours are not at 9.45 to 9.40. Okay. Uh, individual meetings will be directly before or after class. So I don't have an office, obviously, at Montclair. So if you need office hours, we'll just have to meet um, offline, either right before or right after class, generally in there pretty early. I was there at 9 a.m., which I thought was significantly early for the class. Turns out I was actually very late. The delivery for this course will be in person. The course description is uh, very simple provide you with comprehensive introduction to fitness concepts. That is all realms of fitness, not just strength and conditioning, not just physical education, but all realms of uh, fitness to include movement, caloric expenditure, et cetera. Understanding the difference between fitness for a specific outcome, athletic development, performance, or work requirements, such as uh, tactical athletes or uh, first responders, labor workers, et cetera, versus general fitness by learning the involved concepts. Basic understanding of these concepts should develop a foundation to begin academic exploration of programming, exercise, physiology, and leadership in anaerobic fitness. There are no prerequisites for this course. So this course is a building block. It is one of the foundation stones for building a tall pyramid with a wide base of understanding of all things fitness related. So if you are an exercise science major, this, will, this should set you up for success in the future. If you are not, this will be a very broad class covering multiple topics, um, nothing too deep. So we're gonna be um, a mile wide and an inch deep on a lot of these topics as opposed to an inch wide and a mile deep. Expected outcomes for the class is that we understand the terminology for fitness related items, fitness related issues in both uh, the professional realm and uh, societal realm. Principles of training, pillars of fitness, components of planned sessions, movement, training versus fitness, specificity and testing, and there will be a few others uh, as we go through. So those are the broad topics. Our resources are going to be the National Strength and Conditioning Association's Basics of Strength and Conditioning. You do not necessarily need to purchase this textbook. The slides and the lectures will go very deep into the explanation. 
However, it is recommended that you do purchase the textbook for the future classes in case it is required, or um, if you plan on making a career out of strength conditioning. I have had the same textbook for seven years and I use it frequently. There is another textbook that we will use. I need to add on here. I won't take your time doing that. It is the illustrated essentials of musculoskeletal anatomy. And I specifically use the fifth edition right here. Green textbook, metal spiral backing. Most of our movement lecture comes from that specifically. Technology requirements for this course, note taping, note taking capability. So if, whether you do that with a Palm Pilot, a crayon or pen, paper, notebook, laptop, calculator, whatever you use, you will need that technology. Nothing else is required. Grading policy, final grade calculation. We don't round. Uh, it is what it is. The weight distribution for the written exams are as follows. We're going to take four exams. They're worth 20% each, making 80%. Attendance and participation is 20%. All of you start with 100 on participation and attendance, which is 20 points to include today. The only one that loses points on that one is me. All right, we are dependent on weather. If something happens, um, such as inclement weather, Hurricane Ida or whatever, we will move directly online and cover that topic. Unless it's a lab, then we may just call it a wash and try to meld the two labs together because it's very hard to do a lab online for uh, all intents and purposes of this course. Exam one will cover introduction, definitions, fitness types, and related issues. Exam two will cover micro, meso, and macro cycles, training versus fitness. Exam three will be specificity testing, long-term progression. And I believe movement is here as well. We'll just call it B1. Movement is uh, a lengthy topic. Course policies, attendance and participation. Attendance is not mandatory, but unexcused absences will count against your participation grade, 20% overall. Withdrawal and refund policy can be found here. Click the link, it'll take you to the policies, uh, the school's policy for withdrawal and uh, refund. Late policy, late work is reduced to 80%. So if you miss if you miss the turn-in date on, on an item, you can still receive points for it, but the most you can get is 80%. If a class is canceled due to an emergency, there will be an assigned virtual lecture or assignment, which is today's syllabus. <clears throat> Classroom expectations for behavior and etiquette. We are adults. Let's act like it. Um, I know often we are treated like less than adults, especially uh, more recently than in the past. But we are, uh, I've never had a problem with it. I don't think I'll have a problem with it. Academic honesty and plagiarism not tolerated. More details can be found here. Click the link. It'll take you to the university's plagiarism and uh, dishonesty policy. MSU protocols and resources. It is important for all students to be familiar with the university policies and procedures. Visit the university's policies and procedures website for details. Commitment accessibility. Uh, we are in compliance with the uh, American Disability Act, ADA. So all, everything's ADA compliant. If you do have any kind of issues um, with Disability Resource Center or anything else that needs to be brought to my attention as the lecturer, please let me know. More information on the syllabus. Okay. So today I did have an activity that we will obviously not be able to do today. But what I'm going to do is take you back to modules. So... Our activity, I'm going to un keep it unpublished, was uh, Lost at Sea. It was kind of like an ice-breaking team-building event. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. We will do that on Tuesday. Terminology, lecture one. I'm going to go ahead and un I'm going to go ahead and publish this, and we'll just quickly review it. We will revisit it on Tuesday, but this is so we do not get far behind um, due to missing this class today and Friday as well. So I like to start every lecture with a little bit of a lesson learned through either reading or experience. Um, I have a, a vast library of books that I have personally read. Some of them stay pretty, pretty close within arm's reach. This is 
uh, number number one or number two, however you look at it. This is Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. It is truly a life-changing book if you apply the principles that you learn in the book. If you apply the principles that you learn in the book, it can be life-changing. Same can be said by With the Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, another phenomenal book. And lastly, top three, Leaders Eat Less by Simon Sinek. So if you have any um, any any goal or just curious about leadership, any goal to be a leader, or if you have previously had good or bad leaders and you kind of want to learn behind the scenes work, uh, Leaders Eat Less by Simon Sinek. Dale Carnegie just kind of puts in a perspective how to be a good person, both great books. So a tell told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. So this is uh, this is the start of fitness related issues. And uh, it's, it's a kind of a jab at the Instagram influencers. You know, every day I see on social media, someone is trying this new program or not even a new program, but maybe an Eastern block program, small off Chico or something like that, where they squat every day, 10 by 10. And then they drop down and attempt a new max for three reps, something crazy like that. And it goes on for 10 weeks. Um, all, all of these ideas are often stemming from um, influencers or people that are very loud and uh, talk about or at least kind of sell themselves as the, the smartest expert out there. Uh, and it really does remind me of the quote from Shakespeare's Macbeth, uh, a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Uh, a lot of it is just empty promises and uh, a lot of uh, hot air. There's another one, simple truths are a relief from grand speculations. It kind of goes uh, hand in hand. You can you can write and download all of these fancy programs and down to the smallest percentage. But at the end of the day, if you stick just to the simple principles of training, you're going to be uh, you're going to be pretty far ahead. So really, realistically, you, you stick to Prilpin's chart. You understand the law of accommodation. You follow the six principles of training and um, you understand the law of accumulation. You go from there, you can you can write a pretty simple, pretty good program that will uh, facilitate to almost anyone. These two quotes provide insight on the importance of being a, the silent professional and humble expert. We've even taken we have taken a dangerous turn down the road of blindly believing influencers. So that's our uh, kind of our thought of the day. Terminology, we'll get into this in person, but we just I want to discuss fitness. Like how, how would you define it? So when we sit down, all of you will at least have the opportunity to raise your hand and I'm going to have at least three or four of you define fitness for me. Um, you'll notice that there are no lecture notes below the slides. I do not provide the lecture notes with the slides um, because you do need to be in class for them. So um, Make sure you are taking notes because, again, the files that you have will not be the files that I have. and You will need them for, for the exams. All right. So make sure we pay attention and take notes. Metabolism is the total of all catabolic or exergonic and anabolic or endocrinic reactions in a biological system. Much more simpler than that. Energy derived from catabolic or exergenic reactions is used to drive anabolic or endogenic reactions through an intermediate molecule adenosine triphosphate metabolism is the breakdown of atp for energy the end basal metabolic rate is the rate at which the body uses energy while at rest to keep vital functions going such as breathing and keeping warm so if you were to sit in a room temperature room completely supine meaning on your back arms by your side at an absolute relaxed state that is homeostasis everything outside of that is a stressor the, the more chronic the stressor is, the more likely an adaptation is to occur. Don't worry about that yet. We'll get into that. But know that whatever's happening inside your body while you're at homeostasis is your metabolic rate, your basal metabolic rate. That is the rate of energy just to keep you alive without being stressed. Aerobic with oxygen in regards to energy production. So aerobic Aerobic means with oxygen. It is the oxidative energy system, uh, meaning it breaks down molecules of fat or adipose tissue for energy. It yields the highest amount of ATP, but it takes the longest amount of time to supply. And it can also last the longest amount of time. Then we have anaerobic, which means without oxygen in regards to energy production. 
Uh, anaerobic means it is either the ATP PCR energy system or the glycolytic. There is no oxygen needed, um, and which means it typically takes place in less than five minutes. The reason I say less than five minutes, five minutes generically is because there are a lot of uh, discrepancies between literature and research articles about how long it exactly lasts. Typically, it's anywhere between 90 seconds to two minutes is your anaerobic system. Anything over it's oxidative, meaning it requires oxygen. It kind of makes sense, right? How long could you hold your breath? It's, they're not, it's not saying that. It's not saying if you do exercise while holding your breath, you are in anaerobic guaranteed, but just a simple analogy. Calorie is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water through one degree Celsius, often used to measure energy value of foods. So a calorie is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram water to one degree Celsius. That's simple. Bioenergetics is the flow of energy in a biological, yeah, biological system concerns primarily the con conversion of macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, which contain chemical energy into biologically usable forms of energy defined as the ability and capacity to perform work. Bioenergetics covers the energy systems, ATP, PCR, glycolytic, and oxidative. So bio, those are your bioenergetic pathways and bioenergetics is the discussion of what energy system uses what substrate at what intensity and what length of time. Um, when we get to the exam and we're answering questions based on the definitions, it certainly will not be fill in the blank and you have to memorize the full definition. You will just have to be able to explain the concept of what it is. All right. Uh, something, some definitions may require multiple topics being hit. For instance, anaerobic capacity. If that were a question, what is anaerobic capacity? You would have to discuss the energy systems used, the length of time, and the intensity in which it's conducted. But again, we will cover all of this stuff in detail that you'll be tested on. Energy system is the bioenergetic pathway, which is the same thing as bioenergetics. It's the energy system, bioenergetic pathway, ATP, PCR, glyco glycolysis, and oxidative. Joint rotations and movement. I left this one blank because we're going to get to the, an entire lecture on that. The Carvonian method, which is just the formula your, of your heart rate reserve multiplied by the percentage of intensity plus your resting heart rate. So there's the age predicted max heart rate, which is your age, which is 220 minus your age. Then in, uh, you would take the percentage that you're going to train at. Say you want to train at 85% of your age percent of max heart rate. You would take the Carvonian method, which is 220 minus your age, times your percentage, 0.85. Then you would subtract your resting heart rate, and that is your heart rate reserve using the Carvonian method. Uh, pedometer, simply a step counter. Terminology continued. Sedentary is a lot of sitting and lying down with little to very little to no exercise. This is one of the fitness related issues of today in modern society. A lot of us work at a desk. Even during the pandemic, we were sent home for a little over a year and a half for many people. And we went sedentary overnight by 40% or better. Uh, I know my daily life, I was on my feet walking around, changing weights and stuff like that for 10 to 12 hours a day. And then I went to not doing that more than an hour or two in my own uh, gym. So it was, uh, it was a huge change in lifestyle for me that led to significant weight gain just because it wasn't monitored and then obviously corrected for that. Acts of daily living or movement patterns occurring commonly in day-to-day -day activities, uh, such as a squat and sitting down on the toilet or similar coming up off of the couch and the concentric uh, concentric portion of a squat, very similar. Walking up a set of stairs is very similar to a lunge. Specificity, which we'll cover several times throughout, is the quality of belonging or relating uniquely to a particular subject. This is, uh, I use the said principle for this, which is specific adaptation to an imposed demand. That simply put is if I want to get better at sprinting, I need to sprint, not run a marathon. I need to do, um, for resistance training, I need to do high intensity or moderate to high intensity at moderate to high velocities in order to be better at sprinting. And I need to work movement patterns specific to sprinting, unilateral work, uh, tendon, stiffness, absorption rate, 
et cetera. Um, where con conversely, if I needed to get better at deadlifting, uh, benching isn't going to help me. Pillars of fitness, speed, agility, power, strength, muscular endurance, anaerobic capacity, aerobic capacity, flexibility. We will go over all of these. We'll be able to define them. We will be able to explain them. We'll be able to discuss exercises that test them. Scope of practice is the services that are a qualified health professional is deemed competent to perform and permitted to undertake. So we'll talk about that and issues with the, we'll talk about the issues with um, the specific industry of strength and conditioning, personal training, exercise science uh, with scope practice. Right, we'll stop there and we'll get into a lot of these um, the next time we meet. Is to go ahead and start reviewing the terminology. Look over the syllabus. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me. Once again, I do apologize about today, but next week is a new week and we will start out the right way. So I will see you Tuesday morning at 815 in Panzer Gym for PEMJ 131. Won't miss it. See you guys.